There are many things Mass Effect 4 must get right, and some of those are the stories, characters, relationships, and the feeling of weight behind each decision you make. But one point that isn't being talked about as much is the introduction of new species. Now I do understand it's not priority and Bioware can rest on the lore already established by their previous races, but we've been there, done that. And if you go down this route, you risk losing out on something fresh, a newness, a sense of discovery, a different type of adventure, and more importantly, the dynamics a new species can bring to the table. When you think of the Quarians, you think of the consequences that came with the Morning War. And then you think about the most important question in the game. Does this unit have a soul? When you think of the Krogans and the Genophage, you think about proportionality. When you think Turian, you think first contact war and the hatred that spawned from that. Cerberus, the elusive man, Ashley Williams. These were great questions, and you're only ever really gonna explore them with the foundation of a new species. But with only 500 to 800 years passing from Mass Effect 3 to Mass Effect 4, how do we introduce new races? Where do we find them? Where were they all this time? How do we make them fit within the Milky Way lore? How do we make them make sense? Do you want to talk about it? Don't ask silly questions. Yeah, I want to talk about it. Mass Effect 1, 2, 3, 4 and Andromeda every day. You ain't talking Mass Effect all day, every day. You ain't talking at all. You ain't talking at all. Let's go. In 2185, the virtual alien starship entered a Solarian inhabited system. These are beings that have digitized their minds and uploaded it into a virtual world. Their metaverse if you prefer. And I do like this concept, but let's go a step further with a new race. A lot of you might not have read their three-body problem, but one of the points it touches on is the ability to access a different dimension. Now why a species would want to access this space can vary. There are many quirks and some of them may allow you to interact with other dimensions in different ways. But for this particular new race, it was used as an escape plan to avoid another species that predates the Leviathans, one that considered themselves the true apex race. Now what happened to the other multiple species and this villainous race during this era is unknown. All we know is they're gone and the fourth dimension race that escaped don't know either, but they made it very clear on their return to the third dimension. Your reapers harvested life, they tell you, they had reason. These ones only seek destruction and seem to have no cause. This can tie in exactly with the main story as Liara is the focal point of this investigation, working hand in hand with our new fourth dimension allies, supposed allies, to uncover this mystery. And there is one race that might be able to shed some light and it's probably the most dangerous known to the galaxy, at least for now, and that's the Leviathans. I'll let you guys fill in the rest of the potential story. Uplifting Uplift is a developmental process to transform a certain species or group into more intelligent beings by other already intelligent beings. This is usually accomplished by cultural, technological, or evolutional interventions. In Mass Effect, the Krogans are the prime example of this. And the issue here is the Krogans were uplifted from a technological standpoint and nothing else. They weren't given the biological or cultural benefits which more than likely resulted in the Krogan rebellions. That's not to say the Krogans are necessary at fault here, but that's a whole different video. What we can do here is have two non-spacefaring races, the uplifter and the uplifted, and present them in a sort of Cold War scenario. This primarily comes down to the migration of the uplift race to a different segment of the planet or moon, where they reside for a couple of hundred years. Not all of them, but the majority. But due to ecological disasters, sea levels rising, nuclear war, and or global warming, the uplift race seeks to return back home to more favorable land. However, this has not been occupied by the uplifted, so tensions arise. Furthermore, there is a cultural issue at hand. The uplifted race has gone on to uplift other species and seeks to uplift more. For the uplift race, this is careless and these actions need to be stopped immediately. Because in their eyes, the more intelligent beings on this planet, the more races will lead to less resources, less land, less food. They might even uplift croaking like creatures and eventually civil war. 
The other side, on the other hand, the uplifted, views this as a gift, a religious necessity for those species that have proved themselves. Now, throwing some back and forth, a superiority complex by the uplifters, and a couple of misunderstandings, and you have a story with no clear right or wrong answer. A typical mass effect question with no typical answer. Because there's nothing typical about mass effect anyways. Homo sapiens. Mass effect is a game about humanity's role in the galaxy, but it easily could have been about one of our close relatives, such as Homo heidelbergensis, the Denisovans, Homo ergesta, or the Neanderthals. Now what we do know is these distant cousins were wiped out due to natural disasters, depletion of resources, viruses, lack of food or violence from us, Homo sapiens. But what if that wasn't the case? Similar to the way the Protheans watched over the Asari and guided them, it's possible a Protean faction or Densorian from a previous cycle migrated them to a safe haven when they realized they were due to go extinct. Or similar to the way the Protheans viewed the Solarians back then as a delicacy, our relatives might have been moved to a distant planet to farm more efficiently. And for one very good reason, the inhabitants, whether that be the Protheans or Densorian of this planet, left abruptly. And that reason was the Reapers. As for our close relatives, the Reapers deemed them, along with the other members of the current cycle like the Osiris and Solarians, not intelligent enough to harvest. The question you're asking now is if they survived the Protean cycle like we all did, then why didn't we encounter them in our cycle, Shepherd's cycle? Cycle 6 to 4. Why are they technically appearing in this cycle after us? But what you must understand is, in the grand scheme of things, a couple of hundred years or a thousand is nothing. The Osiris discovered a citadel in 580 BCE. 80 years later, the Solarians arrive and the citadel council is formed between them. 200 years later, they meet the Volos. 300 years after that, the Rachni Wars start. 80 years onwards, we meet the Krogans. 220 years later, the Krogans defeat the Rachni and are hailed as heroes. 400 years in the future, the Krogan rebellions happen. And around the same time, the contact with the Turians is established. A hundred years later, the Krogan rebellions end with the dropping of the Genophage. 1095 years later, the Morning War begins. 262 years later, the First Contact War starts. Shortly thereafter, the Reapers arrive. What I'm trying to make is being spacefaring or what I should say is being late to the party doesn't dictate intelligence or progress. The Torians were on the scene and had access to the mass relay technology for over a thousand years before humanity and we were still able to go toe to toe with them during the first contact war or the relay 314 incident as they call it. So based on all this the cousins are clear, they just barely escaped the cycle and we just barely made it in. If that reasoning isn't good enough for you, we can say that Neanderthals or Denisovan's slow rise was due to natural disasters, adapting to a new environment, dealing with the strains of the new gravity or an increase in competition on this newly homed planet. But regardless of which reason you want to subscribe to, approximately 120 years after the Reapers were defeated, they find the Relay. And for them, just like humanity, a new story begins. The natural cycle is the easiest one because it's all about timing. Throughout the cycle, new species were being discovered such as the Yarg in 2125, Humanity in 2148, the Reloy in 2184, and the Virtue Aliens in 2185. That's four new species in less than 100 years. This means there's always intelligent beings on the cusp of discovering the relays. So it makes perfect sense to discover multiple races post Reaper War in within that 800 years. I'm not saying we should have 32 new races in this new game. I'm saying getting two or three of them this way isn't a reach. It's also not impossible for them to have a higher standing in the galaxy post Reaper War. I'm saying this because when you have access to the mass relays and Reaper tech, your technological advancement increases considerably. And with all the main factions recovering from the war, the Citadel Council struggling to exist, it's possible multiple players can step in to fill that void. Multiple new players 
Keep in mind, the council were eager to let humanity join due to the benefits they would receive. The same with the Krogans and the Turians. Post Reaper War, they need all the help they can get. But let's change the story a bit. Let's make it a little bit more interesting. How about the new races form their own council? How about the Quarians join up with them after being ostracized for so many years? How about the Yarg the Vulture come through as allies, all together shaping the politics of this new Milky Way? Sounds interesting. Sounds fun. Sounds like war. The Quiet Ones. I'm naming them this because if everything proceeded the way it should have been, they would have been the first one to reach the Citadel and not the Asari. However, in 740 BCE, a message was finally deciphered, warning them about the impending Reaper attack which takes place every 50,000 years. Backdating the signal, they established it came from an extinct race at around 49 to 50,000 years ago. They located the signal and wiped it clean. This was done to ensure it couldn't be traced back to them, fearing that Reapers might tackle any beings that actually knows of their existence, spacefaring or not. Signal was too close to home. So yes, they chose to save themselves at the expense of every other species. Do they have reached out and found other races to coordinate an attack? This was on the cards, but a civil war broke out and the coordination faction lost to the isolationists. For the isolationists, there were too many hurdles. They believed they needed thousands of years of preparation to even muster a challenge to the Reapers. They were also a lot more pessimistic or realistic. Would these other species listen or even trust them? Will cultural differences get in the way? Politics. Why take a chance? Why risk yourself for races that might war with you? Let this cycle continue and plan for the next. Now the way the galaxy may perceive this when they find out doesn't have to be pure hatred. But the fact that they destroyed a signal that could have mitigated or saved millions, billions or trillions of lives is looked down upon. No one really wants to engage with a race as self-serving as them, giving them a negative connotation or vibe in the galaxy. Yeah. Migration. The migration theory is my favorite as it rings close to home for Mass Effect fans. We already had a group venture into another galaxy with the Andromeda Initiative. And while this didn't happen solely because of the Reaper attack, it was hastened to buy it. Now, we don't want a like for like situation as that might be too easy, despite it being quite a good reason. But for this new race, migrating to the Milky Way could range from being exiled to being hunted down. Maybe they created an abomination of some sort that seeks revenge. Or is it something that has no feeling or soul? We meet again, young one. The key theme for this race is, when prompted as to why they made this journey, their response is simple. They wanted to see what the universe has to offer. They were looking for a new place to call home. Curiosity is innate to them. This is all a lie. And having a member on your ship where his or her loyalty is tested between staying true to her people or to the crew and you makes for an interesting dilemma. And if the reasons for the migration were to be given freely to you by your potential lover based on the connection and trust, whether you choose to betray him or her and tell the newly formed council is entirely up to you. But do remember, every decision has a consequence. Yeah.